Hey, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a quiz on Canvas. Canvas has this huge um, quiz taking capability, and you can manage your questions and your question banks and your scores, and there's lots of functionality. I'm going to show you the basics so you can get started uh, making your first quiz. Now, here I am on my module page. I've got two modules, module one, module two. Um, so, you, of course, you may have more chapters or modules or content than this. You just pick which content it belongs in, which module. I'm going to put mine in Unit 2, and anytime you want to add anything to a module, you hit your plus button on that module. It always defaults to thinking you want to create an assignment. This time I'm going to switch over to Quiz. I need to set this drop down to Quiz. Hopefully you're making your quiz right now while you're watching, so you can pause and, and have a step-by-step -step guide. So if you need to pause me and go, go start your quiz, go for it. Um, I want to make a quiz. I want it to be a brand new quiz. And I need to give it a name. Once you've got quiz, new quiz, name, hit your add item button and it'll show up here. Now I think the really strange thing is once it shows up, it doesn't have anything in it. It's totally blank. So you have to, it's in the, in the unit I wanted, but now I'm going to hit, I'm going to click on it. Once I get to this point, I want to hit edit so I can change it. This page is a little interesting because you have these two tabs right here. This details tab helps you um, change all the settings about how it's graded and what kids can do and how they accept it and blah blah blah. This next tab here is where you actually make your questions and we'll make those later. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up all my details about the quiz and the settings of it then we'll go actually make the quiz. Right here in this big box this is where you type your directions. Your directions could be as complicated as you want. They could have an image. They could have a link to a URL. You could actually throw a video in if you just have the URL from YouTube. If you go to YouTube and copy the link, you could put a video right there. Or you could just say something simple, like answer these questions. I always like it to be a graded quiz. I'm going to run through kind of the basics. Um, your assignment group probably doesn't matter to you too much. There's no option to shuffle the questions. Everybody's question one will be the same question, but you can shuffle the multiple choice answers around. So there's an option to shuffle the answers. You probably want that. You can say they have to be done in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. If you leave this unchecked, they have all day and they can do it whenever. The only thing about this time limit is if I have not pressed submit when the time limit is up, I get a zero. So if you had answered most of the questions but then hit submit you're going to get a zero when the time ticks and you've run to zero so be really careful with that or at least let kids know that because that can be a little intense um, depending on how you want to use this quiz if if it's a test or something very serious you might only want them to have one attempt and so you leave this alone um, if you want them if it's more formative and it might be your bell ringer or their exit slip or something you can let them try it as many times as they want so maybe next week you make them go try it again and that would be that's real great if you have um, some kind of intervention day or, or just you want to use it as a study guide or anything like that you could just leave it out there and say okay what you need to do this weekend is retake your quiz and get a hundred or retake it and see if you can improve your grade um, you can also say that your what grade is important to the teacher, the highest grade, the newest grade, the average of all their grades. And you can even, if you want to, limit how many times they can take it. Without that check, they can take as many times as they want. Now, again, this all depends on how you're going to use this. If it's a super serious grade, you might not want them to ever even be able to see their responses. Like you just take them and it's graded and it's all done. If it's more formative and you want to use it almost as a learning tool or a study guide, I would say let them use their, um, let them see their quiz responses. So they'll see their answers, they'll see which ones were wrong, but it, with this marked and just this, they won't see their actual correct answers. They'll just see what they got wrong, but not what the right answer was. If you want to, you could let them see the right answers too. I, t I tend to use this where they can see what they got wrong, but if they want to try it again, then they don't know what the right answer was, but they could go try it again. So I feel, I feel like that, if you're using it as a formative or as a learning tool, I feel like that's a really good setting because they can try again without having all the answers right in front of them. Um, with this unchecked, they see all the questions on one big page. I have to scroll down. 
I like to maybe do it one at a time. So they see question one and hit next to move to question two. So I like to turn this on. Some, if you want them to be forced um, to answer them in order, you could lock their questions after answering. With this turned on, once they've done question two, they can't go back to it. If you turn this off, they could hop around through the questions all day until they hit submit. So I could finish question five and go back to question two and change my answer. With this, once you've done question two, it's done. And so if you have some cheaters or some cheating concerns, you might lock them down in that way. Um, I don't ever use these settings. The important thing is here, you probably want everybody to take it. You don't even have to do a due date if you don't want to, because, um, but you could. Right here, this, if you want the quiz to disappear off of the site so they cannot get to it, you could say what time, what day and what time should it disappear, and that would be what that does. Now, those are all the settings for the quiz. We still don't have any questions on the quiz. So those are all the settings and details. Once you go to questions, this tab here. So hopefully you're watching this as you're making your quiz and you can pause and go try it on your own and come back. Um, once you hit this tab for questions, I don't have any questions. So um, the good news is I'm going to show you how to make questions right here. The good news is once you've made questions, they always exist and you have a question bank. So you could go find old questions. So if you're doing, if you made a quiz for each day, then when it's time for review, you just can go find what questions you want to put on the review. So that's kind of handy. But it is a little time intensive to make a question, but they are stored. Now, I'm going to show you how to make a question real quick new question. What I would say is make sure you name this, give it a name that reflects what the question's about so that you can reuse this question and find it later. So if it's about prepositional phrases, I don't know what those are, but English teachers do, I could say this is prepositional phrases, question one. Now, this is where things get kind of crazy. There are tons of different question types. I'm going to start with the basic one multiple choice. Now let me show you, I'm going to change gears, I'm going to show you what a multiple choice question would look like. So this is kind of a finished multiple choice question. They have the question, they have the answer, they can only select one answer, and then they move on. And that would be a multiple choice question. So if I want a multiple choice question like that, I select multiple choice, I type in my question, then I put in my answers. So if it's a, if this question's about prepositional phrases, I don't know why it has numeric answers, but you just then, once you type them in, then as you hover over here, you could click on what is the correct answer. So you so you just get your options here to, decide, to mark which one would be correct, counted right. The thing I love is right here, this is a decoy answer. It's not the right answer because I haven't marked it as right, right? I haven't clicked here to mark it as right. What I can do, this little box here, if I click on this, I can give them hints like um, you subtracted when you should have added or something like that. I don't know why that, whatever, whatever tip, whatever feedback you would want to give a kid that said that bad answer, you could type it right there. That means you don't have to write it on every kid's page when you're grading them at home. The kid that answers this will see that tip when it's all said and done and you only had to type it once. So that saves you tons of time and can be used as a great learning tool. Learn from your mistakes. If you did this, it's because you made this kind of mistake to kids will get that feedback. Now, make sure that you update that question. So that question exists. I still need, haven't saved this quiz, so you might want to save the quiz periodically too. Um, so I made that question. I'm gonna make another question. Give it a useful name. Let's try something different. Let's say, you saw multiple choice. I'm going to I'm going to now show you multiple answers. Multiple answers is a different question type. It's almost exactly like multiple choice. I'm going to show you a finished version. A multiple answers question is like multiple choice, but I can pick all the right answers. So this really messes with kids' brains. Maybe there's more than one right answer and they need or maybe there's three right answers. So they get an option to pick as many as they think are right. So that the actual setup you type your question you populate your answers the only difference is you can mark this one right make one that one wrong and i can make this one right so you just hover over and click the little thing to make it right and of course you can still do your little tips for the wrong answer um 
you could be like, don't do that. Right, that one thing you said in class not to do, and they did it and got this answer. You could have this pop up on their graded work. You did that one thing that we said not to do, and you could be as detailed as you want there. Now, so the setup of it looks exactly like a multiple choice setup. You just ha are able to click more than one right answer. Make sure you click update question before you move on. Let's make another question. Um, I'm going to show you fill in the blank. Fill in the blank would, when they're done. When you're done, a fill in the blank question, a student would see something like this: a question and a blank to type into. So that would be a fill in the blank. When you say that you want to do a fill in the blank question, of course you want to give it a good name. You want to type your question, and then once you've typed your question, you all they're going to see is somewhere to type an answer. Right? So they get this blank they could type their answer into. You could be nice and um, accept more than one possible answer. So if you wanted to say, I will accept three, or I will accept six divided by two, you could say both of those. Now, these are all right answers that you're listing. Right? So there's not a, there's not a way to mark it right. If you've typed it, it's counted as a right answer. So if you want to limit, to, limit it to one right answer, you can do that. You can also, down here at the bottom, you can give them feedback for anybody that got it wrong. So that's what that red box is down there. If you click this, anybody that gets it wrong will get some helpful feedback. That's not helpful feedback, but whatever. So there's fill in the blank. I'm also going to show you matching real quick. I'm going to make one more question. Of course, true and false is pretty straightforward, and there's there are if it's if you're a math person, numerical answer is what you want. It's better than fill in the blank because it's fill in the blank with a number that can only be a number. Um, formula question is real complicated. Um, what you probably want matching is another really popular one. In the matching setup, you type in your question, and then basically you have this matches with this. Now, right now, there's only one thing, but you could say I want lots of things that they're going to match. And you could say, this is the thing that matches with that. That is the thing that matches with that. Let me show you what that looks like when you're done. A matching question would look like this. So this is static, and then they have to pick the thing that matches with it. Now, I'm going to get this wrong, because every kid always gets that wrong. But that's what a matching question would look like to a student. Right? Now, I'm going to stay in student mode. I'm a student taking this quiz. Notice one question per page. Uh, multiple drop downs a little crazy. I may do a video just on multiple drop down. This question type is kind of crazy to set up, but if that's something you want, I'll make a video on that. Once I've answered all my questions, did I not answer question four? Whoops. So they can, now you, I have it set to allow them to navigate backwards, but you could turn that off. Once they're done, they submit their quiz. Now, the great thing is they get immediate feedback. Boom. If you have it set to let them see their answers. I got this wrong. And look at that. A student gets helpful feedback from you if you type that in. You don't have to write it on 100 papers. It's right there. And they get it in the moment as soon as they hit submit. That's really powerful for kids, in my opinion. There's all these things. This one was right. This one I got wrong, but I, didn't, I did not set it to show them the right answer. So if they want to take it again, they don't know what the right answer was. They just know that was something they struggled with.